Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to make a bulk header junction using textures. Go ahead and grab the default cube, and I'm just going to convert this into a rectangle by hitting S to scale, Y to drag in that axis, and then likewise S and X until I have a rectangle I'm happy with. Something like this will do fine. I'm going to then hit Control A, apply the scale, come to the modifiers, and add in a bevel modifier with two segments, a limit method of angle, and an offset of 0.02. You can use whatever you prefer. I'm also going to add in a subdivision surface of two, and this will give me something nice and smooth. I'll also right click on my object and choose Shade Smooth. And from here, we can actually start setting up the textures. Go ahead and open a new window by dragging at the bottom here and changing the type to a shader editor. We'll then hit N to hide the side panel, and then we'll choose new for a new material. We'll also hit Z in the viewport and drag to material preview so you can see what I'm doing. Right now, if I were to change this, I would just get whatever color I want. And we're going to start with a nice dark blue. I'm going to drag this down, then hit shift D with it selected to make a duplicate. I'll change the color here to say orange, and then making sure I have node wrangler enabled. So come to edit preferences, add-ons, and look for node wrangler. If this box is checked, then we're good. I will select this node, hit shift and hold it down to select this one as well, and just hit control number pad zero, and that will add in this mix shader. And the mix shader is going to control whether or not I have completely orange or completely blue. But I can also use a texture to control this factor. So with the mix shader selected, I'll hit control T. And if you have node wrangler installed, that will bring up all of these nodes. And we're going to make a few changes here. I'm going to change UV to object. And I'm going to grab this image texture right here, hit shift S and change the texture type to a Musgrave texture. You can see this is very, very busy. There's a lot going on. And usually you'd want this to be a little bit coarser for the effect. So I'm going to drag these a little further out to the side, hit shift A, go to converter and add in a color ramp. And I'll stick it right there, change from linear to constant. And now if I drag this white out, you'll start to see this effect coming in. This scale, however, is too big, as I mentioned, so we're going to go with something smaller, two, and that'll actually make these islands a little bit larger. We'll drag the detail down to one because we want these to be kind of smooth. And in fact, we can actually pull this down even further. And then we can use the color ramp to just sort of decide how much they're going to overlap. I like something like this. However, I don't like this orange. It's not quite right, so we'll just drag it a little bit over here. And this is really the nice thing about this approach is I can sort of change any aspect of this whenever I want for different bulk header junction effects. I can have a scale that is finer or coarser if I want to show the size of the two relative domains. So you would consider, say, the orange to be the accepting domain and the blue to be the donating domain. If that's technical language, that means nothing to you. Don't worry about it. And of course, because this is all based on two materials, I can change aspects of the individual materials. So let's say I want the orange to be metallic. I can just bring the metallic shader up drop the roughness down, and now the orange is more like a copper. It's very smooth. I can do the same thing with the blue and have a metallic blue. If I wanted to, I could set them up for glass, although you wouldn't actually be able to see these throughout. That's a little bit more complex and will be the subject of the next tutorial. But you have plenty of control over here. So the last thing that I'm going to do, or rather the last two things I'm going to do, is set up a cross section and then also set up just a little bit more interest for the material using the normal values here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll grab either one of these nodes, make sure it's selected, hit Control T again, unplug this from the color, and again, grab this, hit Shift S to change it, and I'm just going to use a noise texture. From there, I'll hit Shift A again, come to Vector, Bump, and grab this right here. Once again, we don't need any of these to be like this. So we'll use object instead of vector, or sorry, we will use object and plug that into the vector. We'll plug the factor into the height and we'll plug the normal into the normal. And once our shaders finish compiling, what you can see is now we have texture on that orange part and only on the orange part. That's a little bit strong, so we could drop that down. It's also a little bit big. So again, we could change the scale and we could have something like this. This is all faked if you will. So it's not actual real distortion. It's just controlled by the material. So we have quite a bit of control over how it appears. If we want to, we could also plug this exact same normal into the bottom node. So the blue would be the same one. And once again, once the shaders update, you can now see that. 
if we wanted to, we could have them be a little bit different. So I could grab the same bump node and I could use a different texture or I could use the exact same texture, which is what I'm going to do here. And I could make it so that one shows the effect much more prominently than the other. I'll do that by reducing the strength on the blue. And you can see now the blue actually also has that slight bit of bump, but it's not really as obvious. And again, if I wanted to, I could just use a completely different texture. So let's say I want another Musgrave. I could do that. I could plug this into the height instead. And now you can see that I have a entirely separate texture controlling the way that the blue looks. So the last thing about all this, which we're going to do just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to get rid of the metallic because I actually like when this looks a little bit more plasticky almost. And we will go ahead, wait for all that to update. I'm going to close this window now. And I'm going to make it so that we can look at a cross section. We could sort of depth profile through this. And this is very easy to do. We're just going to hit shift A, add in another cube, G and Z to bring that up, S to scale that. And we'll again, we'll just scale that on the Y, scale that on the X. We want it to be a little bit bigger than our object this time. Hit G and Z to move that up. And one thing that we really need to do right now is grab your original bulk header junction, which we'll rename right now as BHJ. Tab into edit mode, right click and choose subdivide. And we're actually going to subdivide this a reasonable number of times, maybe 20. That just means that when we use our Boolean for this object, it will be a little bit better. So go ahead, come to the object properties tab for this cube, which we're going to call cutter. And we're going to change viewport display from display as textured to display as wire. We're also going to check this little funnel right now and come and enable the camera icon, we will make sure the cutter is disabled in renders just so that it doesn't interfere with our scene. And now what we would do is we would grab our BHJ cube, come back to the modifiers, add a Boolean modifier, and we're going to use difference with, of course, our cutter. What this means is that if we drag our cutter down, we can actually cut through and see as this texture evolves, we can depth profile through the whole thing. We could also do smaller slices by just changing the size of our cutter. So if we scale our cutter down in the Z direction and then move it into the middle, you can now see we have a nice little cross section of how this is actually looking. So this is a very nice way to do all of this work with a nice ability to do animations for cross sectioning by just simply dragging throughout the bulk of the material and seeing how the acceptor and donor domains would evolve. Because they're based on textures, you can, of course, come back at any time and change aspects of that texture, whatever color you want them to be, um, how they're roughly distributed, the greater or lesser extent of those domains. You could also use extra textures such as gradients on top of all this so that you could enrich one phase, say the green on the bottom and the blue on the top. All kinds of options, very easy, very modular. The only downside is that we can't isolate the individual cross section. So I can't show just the blue without the green. That will be the subject of the next tutorial, which is based a little bit more on modeling and is more involved. But for now, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use it to go make some figures. And until next time, you have yourself a great old day.